as a pre initiated. May I once again request Mr. Mehta to present the joint collaborative effort by Fiki and Tekken Singh Company. And the 95th and the general meeting. Today we have the honor to have with us not only one of the most senior, most and dynamic political leaders, but an extremely erudite person in Sri Ragnar Singh Ji, uh, Honorable Raksha Mantri, Government of India. I'm sure all of you will concur with me that as the Union Minister for Defense since May 29, Ragnar Singh Ji has spearheaded many initiatives to march forward to achieve the goal of Atman Nirmal Raksha Uthman. लेकिन उसके पहले यहाँ पे देखा होगा कि मेरे बारे में भी कुछ उन्होंने कुछ अच्छी-अच्छी बातें कही मैं सोच रहा था कि इस समय कीमत तो थोड़ी बढ़ी है लेकिन हमारी कीमत बढ़ाने की कोशिश क्यों कर रहे हैं करने में बेहद खुशी हो रही है और यहाँ पर इंडस्ट्री कैप्टन और बीजेपी फीडर्स मौजूद हैं मैं जानता हूं कि इसके पहले भी हमारे फाइनेंस मिनिस्टर बड़े ट्रांसपोर्ट मिनिस्टर ये सब तारे कई डिप्लीटीज आ चुके होंगे उन्होंने अपनी बातें आपके सामने रखी होंगी अब उसके अलग हटकर कुछ बोलना ये हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ा चैलेंज है बहुत बड़ी चुनौती है लेकिन फिर भी यदि मैं यहां पर मौजूद हूं और फिक्की के एशियन में तो स्वाभाविक रूप से मुझे आर्थिक विषयों पर ही अपने विचार व्यक्त करने होंगे और जो व्यावसायिक विषय है प्रोफेशन से जुड़े हुए बिजनेस से उन्हीं बारे में यहां पर चर्चा करनी है और आप लोगों ने एटीएम की जो थीम रखी है इंडिया है फंड अमृत का सस्टेनेबल एंड इंक्लूसिव इसके आगे मुझे कुछ कहना ही यही तो विकास का मंत्र है जो आपके एटीएम की थीम है अमृत का के रूप में बनाने का फैसला किया है यानी आजादी के पचहत्तर वर्ष पूरे होने के बाद अगले पच्चीस वर्ष में जो ट्वेंटी फोर्टी सेवन तक चलेगा उस दौरान भारत भारत विकास की राह पर किस तरह से आगे बढ़ेगा ताकि उसकी विकास यात्रा सस्टेनेबल भी हो और इंटरेस्ट भी हो याद दिलाई थी देश को पहला था विकसित भारत का निर्माण दूसरा था गुलामी की हर सोच से मुक्ति तीसरा था विरासत पर गर्व एक चौथा था एकता और युद्धता और पांचवा था नागरिकों द्वारा कर्तव्य पालन ये पांच बातें शामिल हैं जो उन्होंने प्रण दिलाए थे और इनमें जो तो सबसे सबसे पहला प्रण है विकसित भारत का निर्माण कराना चाहिए कि हम दुनिया के दूसरे देशों पर डोमिनेट करना चाहते हैं अथवा दुनिया के किसी देश की एक इंच जमीन पर कब्जा करने की हमारी मंशा है जाना जाता है भारत को आजादी मिलने के समय और उसके बाद भी कई देश आजाद हुए और वहां पर विकास डेवलपमेंट के एक नए युग की शुरुआत हुई जबकि वे सभी देश अर्थव्यवस्था के मामले में भारत से काफी पीछे थे भारत से कम था भारत और चीन नाइनटीन नाइनटीन तक साथ साथ कदम ताल करते रहे और चीन में साम्यवादी सोच उस समय हावी थी मैंने गंभीर और भारत में समाजवादी सोच थी सोशल और इस दौरान भारत की अर्थव्यवस्था छठवीं सतवीं पावरान को छोड़िए दुनिया की टॉप टेन अर्थव्यवस्थाओं की गिनती से बाहर हो गई उनका तो यह भी मानना है कि 8.5 ट्रिलियन डॉलर से अधिक हो जाएगी भारत के नाम में ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी से बनाते हैं मित्रों से साफ यह पता चलता है कि आज भारत की महत्वपूर्ण भूमिका होती है विजय पर्सन इसके बारे में सुनना भी ज्यादा पसंद करते हैं और आप लोग अवगत होंगे कि हमारी इंडस्ट्रीज को अपने देश में मार्केट उपलब्ध कराना हमारी आत्मनिर्भरता के कमिटमेंट का एक बहुत ही यह महत्वपूर्ण हिस्सा है हमने अपनी डोमेस्टिक इंडस्ट्री के लिए डोमेस्टिक मार्केट को अनफेयर फॉरेन कंपटीशन से प्रोटेक्ट करने का भी प्रयास किया to achieve the target of uh, defense production of USD 22 billion by 2025, as you just mentioned, and head towards becoming Atmanirbhar in Raksha Adhwada. The government's focus on Make in India and Make for the World 
is an impressive strategic move towards shedding its historical status of one of the world's largest importers of defense equipment. To but as we go ahead, we are looking at challenges, some of them old legacy challenges and some of them entirely new. At the top of the, top of the list, of course, is sustainability and climate change, uh, the impact of global warming, which we all have some idea about, but we are not exactly clear what is going to be uh, the micro impact. But one thing is very clear, there was a recent FAO paper which said South Asia, that means the countries starting from Afghanistan, Pakistan, India and Bangladesh. Uh, thoughts of various private sector players and put the overall uh, vision for the growth of uh, the Indian agriculture sector. So I'll take you through a presentation of what we've done. Could you flash the presentation, please? Attempts to try to develop a vision for the Indian agriculture sector, identify key imperatives for achieving sustainable growth, and then uh, identify the role of private sector and the government and how uh, we can to, uh, work together to achieve this uh, vision. So if we look at uh, uh, what Pranesha was just mentioning, agriculture sector today is facing a number of diverse and multi precipitated challenges. While production, increasing production is one, increasing population, increasing uh, urbanization and shifting dietary patterns is changing the way uh, production needs to be done. On the supply side, we see that decreasing labor availability, increasing farmland fragmentation and declining water resources and soil degradation is challenging the farmer's ability to produce better, to improve productivity. And on the climate side, we are seeing raising temperatures, rainies of monsoons and the concerns of GHG that's again impacting the existing farmer livelihoods. We will give the opportunity for farmers to diversify their crop, to diversify their basket and increase farmer income. Adoption of new technologies and digital uh, practices are uh, key drivers for improving productivity enhancement. We see a number of uh, new technologies coming in forces for the agriculture in the future. Thanks of the GST Council to harmonize various processes and policies across the state. This will help private sector players across uh, to work uh, seamlessly across the country. We need to promote private participation in investment in agriculture. We could probably set up a uh, commodity focused digital steering committees with at least 50% representation from private sector to force them. Also, I saw and will be aware of the, these facts. So I won't delve uh, deeper into that. One uh, uh, example I would cite just to place my talk into uh, context. You know, recently I was uh, once glancing uh, through newspapers and uh, ISRO launched a. Uh, they come out with this soon then we'll call, we'll have a single business side. So technically, there are two ways. You start all over afresh and say there's a single business idea and you follow that in every form. Other way, using technology, we can integrate. You have a single business idea which you remember and you don't have to remember any other ideas. All other ideas will be integrated at the back end. So for entering any portal, whatever you require, you will need to put only that number. So in single window, the design will be your single window. Most expectedly, this will be your band number. And if you have various subordinate organizations with different GST number, so when you put punch your band number, your window will pop up with all the related GST numbers, and then you can select which organization, which entity you are fitting in. <laughs> Once you select that, all other data will you will get pre-filled, like labor, Funds of the business should also be made, can be made on the single window, so that all your returns go to whatever department they have to go. You COVID, we have restarted. There was a lull, like, so we did two, three regional conferences: one at Guwahati, one at Bangalore, then a national conference of all the tourism ministers at Dharamshala. And the idea was to get the state and the center on the same page, so that uh, you know they broadly know what are the national priorities and the states, you know, follow in that direction. The other thing that we are trying is certain areas uh, like, the, you know, which are niche areas that we are trying to develop, say sustainability or adventure tourism or rural tourism. We have set up the national boards, which has representatives of central ministries, the state governments and industry associations. So, you know, they are all meeting on this, uh, so that they are all, uh, you know, speaking in the same voice. So, of course, not all states are represented on these national boards. 
But I think these national boards are a way of, uh, you know, building consensus. For instance, if we take uh, the issue of adventure tourism, one of the uh, claims of the, or the complaints of the uh, asks of the adventure tourism industry is that while guidelines have been there, safety guidelines are not uniformly practiced across this, which we are consulting the states and the industry, which centrally to all the states. So hopefully that will serve as a guide for the states to come out for a model law, which they will enact in their states. Of course, this will need constant interaction and pushing. But I just take the issue of film policies. Each state is coming out with more attractive film policies because they want to attract uh, shootings in their country. And some states have done very well, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh, or others, where, uh, you know, these things have all sick And so... ...a little stronger, maybe, uh, if they could put down, you know, particularly things like health and safety, if some guidelines could be done on that. Also, some sort of, a, of course, GST has taken care of the taxation. So that's become a really easy. Otherwise, we had different states with different tax laws. But if the board, the national board, as you're saying, uh, um, and you also said that not all states are part of it. Could it become mandatory for all states to be part of that board? And perhaps this board could become slightly more strong uh, than it is currently. See, these national boards are basically administrative. There's uh, no legal uh, sanction. So yes, your uh, thought of uh, you know, getting more states on board. But the idea is to, if we get very good states on example, uh, you know, to set the example, if three, four states come, and they do the kind of things, for instance, if in adventure tourism, they come out with very good model laws. That can be managing solar in India and continue to do so. <coughs> it's very refreshing to hear you, and I'm very happy that at least from your side there will be an interaction, a continuous interaction between industry and, and you. Uh, as uh, uh, Stan Gupta mentioned, actually we need $10 trillion if we need to attain net zero both in terms of debt and equity, which doesn't exist in India. And even if you look at most of the companies today, they are foreign owned with foreign capital, all renewable energy companies, because India doesn't have the equity in them. My question to you is, and uh, you know, you uh, government is forming a carbon exchange. Would you permit private sector to have a carbon exchange using blockchain and tokenizing it? A, to attract more... And the amended amendment to the Act has recently been passed by Parliament. And it actually does envisage a carbon market and India is, in fact, there is a designated national authority which would be uh, allowing some carbon trading at the international level, but of course the modalities are still being worked out by the UNFCCC. In the domestic uh, market, of course, carbon trading is something that is the purpose for which this amendment has also been put into place and it does envisage having a robust platform that is being already, that is, an energy efficiency trading uh, system that is there with the BE, but to reinvent it as a carbon trading platform is something that we are working very closely with the BE to, to develop, as well as determining the norms that you mentioned, the norms for the trading. So it is something which is actively being worked on as a policy, and we hope to come out with the contours of this, with of course sufficient amount of consultation, as I mentioned, rather soon given the amendment having just been passed. The preparatory work was already in place, so uh, hopefully the, you know, the details of the domestic carbon market should be in the public decade or so. But there is scope to do much, much more, and the sequestration is amazing. So therefore, we are actively working on a plan, and uh, we, we already we have a very state-of-the-art center in China, the National Center for Sustainable Coastal Management. And in fact, I would like to request all those who are looking at setting up you know, uh, projects in the coastal areas, there's a lot of guidance that you would be able to get. And it is certainly not a center which is only for government and state government. It's there for uh, you know, the, the knowledge and the... Uh, this whole area of carbon credits, uh, we've been very slow.